Pinto team, they showed up last night, but they're probably super jet lagged. So they probably slept in. We're gonna catch a couple waves and then we'll head up to the headquarters. Surf talent, Lorenzo, Costa Rican competitor surfer. We have a really important question for you, Lorenzo. Oh. Let me come over here. We have a really important question for you. How much, how much of your portfolio is in cryptocurrency? What's cryptocurrency? <laughs> well, soon the world will know. You've never heard of cryptocurrency? No. Have you ever heard of Bitcoin? Not really. I'm not informed on the... Uh, Our Asian friend over there will have heard of it. Shay, have you ever heard of cryptocurrency? <laughs> what, what about what about Bitcoin? <laughs> Never heard of Bitcoin either? <laughs> Dude, you guys still on YouTube, huh? Yeah. All right. How's everything right. going? Pretty good. When How are you? Guys, when did you guys wake up? Uh, nine or so. Oh, yeah. you guys been up for a while. Huh? Excellent. So... Cool. How's everything going? You guys getting a good start? Yeah, pretty good so far. It's kind of tough to align everyone with the, with the vision because everybody has ideas and everybody's attached to their ideas and stuff. And I need to focus everyone on the same thing, but I think it will work out. So I have a question for you. Um, so earlier today I was asking people about cryptocurrency and everybody I talked to, you know, I'm just recently learning thanks to you about cryptocurrency at 2 and I. And Every time I talk to somebody, surprisingly, they don't know what it is. And, and most people don't even know what Bitcoin is. So in your opinion, what's the best way to explain to somebody who's never heard of cryptocurrency what it is? I mean, it's how do better you kind of money. I think it's a very good idea to explain it with a better kind of money because that raises the question, why is it a better kind of money? Okay. And then you can have arguments why it is better kind of money. And first thing is that it's not controlled by a single authority, it's controlled by an open source community, which makes it way better than yeah, relying on, on a single authority. That's the first thing. And okay. the second thing is that it's way easier to transfer. Okay. It is global, it's instant and so what would you tell somebody kind of free. it is? Would you say it's, it's digital money? Yeah. Just say it's digital money made for the internet? Yeah. Or universal money. I asked my Asian friend <laughs> and he had no idea and I was like, he's going to know for sure. Did you film it? Yeah. It was so pretty awesome. fun. Yeah. <laughs> We're doing team lunch now. So for the next two weeks during this very heavy intense time, we're going to make sure that everybody has whatever they want. Food-wise, smoothies, sandwiches. This is the Tico typical lunch. Um, so casado style, rice, beans, vegetables. So this is Fabiola. Melin. Melin. And they will be cooking lunch for the next two weeks here. How do you explain to somebody what cryptocurrency is who's never heard of it before? It's a, a, a digital version of gold coins. Why is that better than, say, Visa, MasterCard, or other forms of what seem to be like digital money. All existing fiat currencies are owned and controlled by um, either banks, central banks, governments issued by those. Um, so the fact that somebody else can control the amount of it means that uh, it's out of the people's hands. You're basically just a user of this money as a means of exchanging value but you're at the mercy of um, the issuing institution. And cryptocurrency, I think that kind of unites all of them, as far as I know, um, are issued through a rule system, through, a, through an automated kind of, that's the code, that's what makes the cryptocurrency a digital currency. 
there, it's being issued um, through a rule system that's code-based and it's secure and it, nobody can fumble with it and it's, it's owned by the people, it's owned by the people that partake in this cryptocurrency network. It's basically peop the people's money. So we have the design team here and you guys are basically just getting started. Today's the first day to really just hit the beginning of ICO. What, what's the focus point right at the beginning? Yeah, so um, actually, it's uh, pretty much a Kickstarter that we're doing because we have to we have to get stuff done pretty pretty fast. So normally we would start with like more like a strategic phase, uh, think about like the brand and its core values. But right now we don't really have the time to do that. Um, so we want to get a demo version of, of the wallet and especially a demo version of the mining online as fast as possible. So first we're gonna do that, and when that is done. We'll stay, take one step back, and we'll think about like more, more fundamental, fundamental issues. Any separate focus points, Andrea? No, like right now we're working, working, working together on the, the, the user experience of the front page. So, so most times the first thing people will see of the whole product, and included in that we want to have there's some demo of the core functionality, like. The, the, the unique selling proposition should be very clear from the startup um, and that's what we focus on right now on together and then later on I, I will take care more of how it looks like how, how colors are you know how, how, how it feels and then Tamo will take care of often of, um, strategy language uh, how we talk to people okay. Anybody can get the concept of digital money. Uh, we, we have it already, we interact with it, we do online banking and stuff. And it, from that part, it doesn't really differ that much. It's pretty much the same. I think what it does fundamentally different and, and, and where it's actually strength lies is that it's a way to produce scarcity. It is a system that, that allows you not to have a currency that you just copy paste, but it's a system that ensures you that only one person owns this amount of money. And by, by doing so, it, it gives you the necessary safety and, and the trustworthiness that you need to actually have a digital money. Because I think like the whole digital money thing, that, that's not something special or something revolutionary, but, but the, the, the security aspect and how it's decentralized and, and, and ensured secure, I think that's that's the, the special thing about. Ah, pero en español. En español. Okay. Uh, bueno, una criptomoneda es básicamente eh, un tipo de dinero que está eh, distribuido. No lo controla nadie. Está descentralizado. Entonces no hay un, un banco que lo genere. Se genera a través del esfuerzo de un montón de ciclos del reloj de computadoras alrededor del mundo. Eh, y se, se hace a través de internet con sistemas de peer-to-peer eh, -peer, que no sé cómo se traduce en español eh, sistemas entre pares eh, y entonces al no ser centralizado nadie puede controlarlo a diferencia del, del dinero normal que usamos en Costa Rica por ejemplo el banco central es el que lo controla eh, Bitcoin y otras criptomonedas no, no pueden ser controladas de esa manera son miles de millones de sistemas alrededor del mundo trabajando en conjunto para generarlos uh, no, right now no, because basically because of uh, two reasons. The first one is uh, most of them probably, you know, like the people in the, the cashiers, they don't know, uh, the tellers don't know about it, so you can just go and ask them. Uh, and at the bigger levels, you know, the executives who probably know about it, um, they, they are not sure how to treat it yet, you know. It's been uh, stuff like Bitcoin, it's been associated with uh, bad stuff, you know, back in the US with Silk Road and drugs and stuff like that. Uh, so it's, it, it doesn't have a good rep reputation uh, uh, yeah. for people. Yeah, for people that don't know it very well, right? Uh, and you know, uh, banks. What, what banks are most are most afraid of uh, is risk. Yeah. They don't like risk at all. So that's risky for them. So they are not going to do that. They're probably waiting, you know, for signs from the government or central bank to tell them what they can and cannot do. In the meantime, they are basically staying off it uh, because they need, they have uh, a reputation to maintain and they need to uh, lower the risks. So there's so. no real um, way yet for like tourists to come and vacation with cryptocurrency. Not, uh, not, not, I mean, there might be a way, but is yeah. there? Not, not a real like easy way, but I have this friend who actually met somebody uh, on Facebook, like there's this Costa Rica Bitcoin Facebook group, uh, and this guy wanted to sell some uh, Bitcoins uh, because he was in Costa Rica, a tourist, 
and that's how he got money. Like my friend said, okay, and they met at the McDonald's. And the Facebook. They, yeah. So my friend went to a McDonald's. The guy, uh, I think he was Brazilian, went to the McDonald's, and then my friend gave him gave him the dollars, and the guy uh, sent him the Bitcoin, and they waited for the transaction to be um, checked by several nodes, and after that they were like, okay, thank you, bye. <laughs> and the guy told him he does that. He has a, a bunch of Bitcoins because he's a Brazilian, but he lives in Argentina, uh -huh. where you cannot take dollars easily out of the country, right? Uh -huh. Uh, so that's how he travels. Excellent. Yeah. So, so there's cool. a, where there's a will, there's a way now. Yeah, exactly. There's enough people using it. Yeah. Yeah. So one of my best friends actually asked me this, and she's like environmental, um, agriculture, sustainable agriculture person. So she, so she has no idea what, you know, any of this stuff is. Um, and I told her basically, it's a gold mine that lives completely online, and it's. You know, there are thousands, hundreds of thousands of miners around the world that are going to this gold mine that's that lives completely online, and they're using their computer power to mine this gold reserve instead of you know using shovels or however you mine um, gold, and and in turn you get these coins that live as cryptocurrency online, and you use them to trade for goods with other people just like you would with any other type of currency or gold. Right now I'm working on the um, a feature that we call cash link which is an easy feature to send money around from one person to another um, just by sending really a link and um, so it's, this feature is already implemented and right now I'm security testing it. Well at the end cryptocurrency really is a currency, a new kind of currency. And a currency at the end is something that has the promise of a value. For example, if you have a paper bill, um, it's just paper, but there's a, um, a value connected to it by some promise. You really, you believe in that you, if you give this paper to someone, you can buy something from this. But the difference to normal money is really that it's not um, regulated by a bank or by a government, so there's no trust party in it. Usually with paper money, for example, you have to trust your bank that they're not just uh, printing thousands of new bills and that the value of your bills go down and um, in cryptocurrency this is not just possible like this there's not a bank that can decide overnight that they're gonna double the amount of money so today is officially the first day that the whole Nimic team is working together and I can definitely tell that not everyone is quite used to having a camera filming them but I'm sure everyone will get used to that over the next few days and I noticed Robin definitely seems a little bit stressed out. I totally get that. There's a lot of people, a lot of exciting, a lot of stuff going on so yeah, we got out of there. We're going to be heading back in a few hours. At 7 p.m. they said they're going to be having a synchronization ceremony just to kind of so that everyone, everyone on the team is on the same page. So we'll be heading back over there at 7 p.m. All right, it's 7 p.m. and we are back. Yeah, then you successfully sent the cash link and then we'll, <coughs> we'll offer you data information. This is uh, oh, responsive, you, you, so you want to look just similar on the web browser. Like the Visa guys, yesterday they contacted me. Sources are not the informational website. Yeah, it's very valid. Downpour. There is thunder and lightning, and it's whoa! 
Definitely some thunder. Programming in the middle of a thunderstorm. Now that is awesome.